Denmark has an extremely long coastline, more than eight and a half thousand square, uh, me, uh, kilometers, compared to a relatively small area of the country. So I think everybody has uh, some relationship with the with the ocean. So that's sort of my main relationship uh, to water. And then and then living in Copenhagen now, um, over the last 15, 20 years, it, it's been a goal in the city to clean up the water in the harbor to bring some of that you know ability to interact with the water uh, into the heart of the city so one of um, our first projects at big was designing a harbor path one of the first in the harbor where they let just swim directly into the harbor in areas that used to be for uh, industrial harbor areas uh, and we just recently opened another one in Aarhus the second largest city in Denmark um, it, it's quite nice to to be able to uh, pr provide some some opportunity to people who live uh, inside of the city center to also get some of that feeling of you know li living with water day to day, you can jump into the harbor on your lunch break and uh, get refreshed and go back to work. Um, so, some, something that you know experiencing water in your daily life as as, uh, as opposed to that being something that's reserved for people who live directly on the coastline. In, in the countryside and so on. So th that's interesting to be able to work with that as an architect and to give uh, people s some of those options. In a lot of different ways. At, at, at BIG we have uh, a highly specialized in-house uh, sustainability team and some in-house developed uh, tools to work with things like uh, analyzing the LCA uh, the carbon footprint of uh, projects very early on in the process. So that's something we, we use a lot of different tools to, to analyze our projects very early on to ensure that we have a long-term strategy for sustainability, whether, uh, whether it's either uh, structures, materials, or the energy systems that we use in the building. Um, on another level, we're also experimenting a lot with uh, biomaterials and uh, upcycled and recycled materials we are just finishing an office extension in Copenhagen now that we have built entirely out of uh, hemp and clay and wood. So everything is uh, entirely recyclable and can be composted after, uh, after having served its function as an office space. So that's, uh, th that's very interesting to, to be able to experiment also with some of these things that, are, that we'll have to work much more with as architects in the future. This uh, project I just mentioned is a very good example. So, so um, for example, using clay as uh, wall finishes means that um, you, you know w when you use clay, you 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 work with water to to apply it to a surface, and um, when you want to remove it, you can sort of re-moisturize the clay uh, and just scrape it straight back off the wall and uh, reuse it somewhere else, uh, as opposed to uh, rendering a wall with cement or something else that uh, has been more traditional over the last uh, 50 years. Uh, we now have, we, we are now starting to use these uh, materials that are, you can just take them down and reuse them somewhere else. This is quite interesting. It brings with it also a new set of uh, aesthetics that come along with it. It looks different. Uh, you can work with it in different ways. So, so it's an interesting new directions to explore. There, there was um, in one of the presentations this morning that uh, I, I joined. Th there was a really nice project uh, that I really liked from uh, a Taiwanese uh, office that had worked with uh, a restaurant uh, on wheels, renovating an old uh, train cart. And uh, this project had come about uh, uh, to a large degree on the architect's uh, behalf because they took the initiative it's almost a little bit um, what do you say they're very proactively taking the initiative to to uh, change something that they saw they felt was wrong and then uh, actively going in and say we have we think we have a better solution i think that's that's quite inspiring to see that architects are not just sitting and waiting for a commission but are also actively going out and and uh, offering their help to solve some of the problems that we see around us I'd like to see a lot more of that. I know it's 
everybody has a business to run, uh, and uh, you can't do pro bono work everywhere. But but sometimes taking the initiative ourselves, I think, is is uh, re really great to see. That was quite inspiring for me. Experiencing architecture uh, and all the different projects here, it's just something else to see projects presented in person and to hear all the thoughts that went into it. It's an entirely different experience than, say, reading about it online or in a magazine. Um, you never really get the full picture on, until uh, you hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So, so that's, that, that's another great aspect of this, I think.